just want to uh, say thank, thank God for giving me a chance to uh, talk up here and uh, thank Sifu for uh, giving me the time to uh, <clears throat> tell my testimony. Uh, for me, how I accepted uh, Jesus Christ in my life was, uh, <sighs> it was pretty tough. I had a pretty tough life and uh, <clears throat> I don't like to talk about my past too much. You know, <laughs> you know, and uh, I'm not proud of it, but uh, you know, it says here in Re Revelations 12:11, we will overcome our enemy, be the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of our testimony. So, uh, <clears throat> before I begin, I just want to tell you how I used to be like. Okay, before I uh, accepted Jesus Christ in my life. I uh, I grew up in a Christian home, you know, just like everybody else here, you know. But uh, when I was younger, like 13, 14, you know, I just uh, wanted to have fun. You know, I always thought church was boring and stuff. And then uh, I uh, hung out with, like, some of these other crowds, you know. And then, uh, you know, they showed me a lot of love, you know, taught me how to have fun, you know. And then I was like, man, these guys are pretty cool, you know. So, uh you know, there were a bunch of gangsters too. So uh, I decided to uh, join the gang, you know. So I was like, you know. And then uh, after being a gangster for a while, you know, uh, I learned, you know, how to cheat, steal, you know, violence, drugs, sell drugs, alcohol. You know, I learned how to be like very, very heartless, you know. And then, uh, <clears throat> Being a gang, it was all about like the respect. You know, I wanted to be like the biggest, baddest dude out there. You know, I wanted the respect from all my boys. You know, so I had to do like a lot of stupid and crazy stuff to earn that respect. You know, that I'm not really proud of right now. But uh, just want to let you guys know how it used to be, okay? And then uh, used to be. <laughs> all right. Uh, you know, after uh, you know learning. You know, all that hateful stuff, you know, I became like a, a very uh, revengeful, angry person, you know. And uh, I was like, a, I was in the gang for about 10 years, you know. And then uh, when I was 17, that was like my first encounter with God. <laughs> I was uh, sleeping this one, uh, this one night, and then I woke up like I had a dream. Like, uh, like there was like six, seven angels that came down from heaven. They were like, like ten feet tall. They were like pretty big. They were like uh, wearing like this uh, hooded, like a brown cloth, kind of like you know how like back in the Egypt days and stuff, and they had like these gold these uh, gold crosses on their uh, chain on their necks. And then <clears throat> I saw them flying down, and then one of them came to my front door. This is when I was living in my own apartment at that time, and then uh, they knocked on my door, and I was like, "It was like, hey, open." I was like, all right, you know, open, open my door. Right when I opened my door, I looked outside. It was like, it was like a little short version of hell. It was like nothing but darkness, fire. <clears throat> and then uh, I, I was looking outside. I wasn't really looking at that guy in front of me. That dude in front of me was like, hey, David, can I come to your house? I was like, for what? He's like, you know, he said it. He said it to me, mom. I'm not a home with you. Yeah, I'm not a He came to my house. Because, like, I, when, when I first saw him, I knew he was, like, a good person already. I could just sense it. And he sat down with me. He said, hey, you got a lot of demons around you right now. And you need, you need our help. I'm going to send my angels to come help you. I was like, all right. So I laid down on my bed. They surrounded me and started praying for me. And then uh, all of a sudden, like, all these demons started coming out. And then uh, it was, like, a spiritual battle going on. But there was, like, one angel that stuck by me. He said, don't be scared. And I was like, man, you know, I'm looking at like all this, you know, crazy stuff is happening right in front of my face. And then uh, I said, you know, I'm scared. You know, don't, don't leave me. And then that angel said, uh, you know, uh, my son, I will never abandon you. And I was like, okay. And then uh, he said, close your eyes. And then I closed my eyes and he started praying for me. And then, uh, when I closed my eyes, he started praying. It was like big bright light. And then I 
close my eyes. Even even if I close my eyes, I can still see that light because it was so bright. And then uh, he started praying for me, and then uh, this like all of a sudden, this light just surrounded me. It felt so warm. It felt like I mean, this this feeling that I had never felt before, you know. And it was like the best way I could describe this feeling is like uh, you know when you're a little kid, a, uh, you're in China, you know you go you go to your mom and dad and they hold you. You know, it was like that kind of feeling. And then, uh, you know, you felt safe, you know, secure. And, uh, you know, you know that nothing's going to happen to you. And I woke up. I woke up like that morning. And then uh, I still, man, I was like, man, that was a weird dream. You know, but uh, during that time, you know, I was doing a lot of drugs too. And then I was like, man, that's like the best feeling ever. And then, uh, I was like, man, you know, like, None of this drug that I was doing could compare to this this feeling that I felt, you know. So uh, I was kind of like searching for that feeling, but like didn't know where to find it. So after that, I just kind of, you know, drifted away from that, you know, that that dream, you know. I knew it was like, I knew it was like God or something, you know, because like, like I said, you know, when I was still a kid, you know, my mom and dad used to take me to church and all that stuff. And then, uh, yeah, after that, um, I just kind of lost my way again. I mean, that was the first time, you know, God had called me, but, you know, like you told you, and then, uh, <laughs> you know, and then, uh, let's see. Yeah, um, after a while, you know, after like 10 years of like, you know, Olaya, and then uh, my, my friends betrayed me, you know, they didn't want to get locked up, so they, uh, you know, started pointing fingers at me, and then uh, it was a good thing, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, they didn't find enough evidence on me. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, actually, uh, yeah, you know, and then uh, during, that was like, you know, during the time we was gonna come to Florida too, and then uh, my dad, you know, we came to Florida here, and I, I told myself, you know, I was like, you know, I think it's time for a change, you know, I gotta, uh, you know, I gotta do something in my life instead of just doing this. I can't live like this forever. Came down to Florida here. You know, I was trying to change, but I couldn't change, man. I just kept partying, drinking. You know, it's all about my friends. You know, and then uh, no matter how hard I try to change, we change slow enough. And then, uh, you know, I just thought to myself, like, man, I guess, you know, we need life to get in all center. You know, like. I can't go any further, you know, this is a dead end, you know. Uh, I hit my limit, right? And then I went in the refrigerator, ran out of beer. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm gonna go to the store. I'm gonna go buy me some beer. And before I drove to the store, I was like, you know, you gotta put in your favorite radio station, right? You know, and uh, I was flipping through channels and this Christian radio come on, came on and it was a pastor saying, he said, hey, you feel like you hit a dead end? <laughs> I was like, hey, that's me. <laughs> feel like you hit your limit? I'm like, whoa, this guy's talking to me, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, what's your name? <laughs> and then uh, I was like, man, you know? And he was like, you know, with God in your life, you know, you know, there's no limit. You know, with God, it's, it's you know, like uh, limitless. You know, I was like, man. You know, I sat there, like, you know, thinking about it for a while. Say, all right, I'm gonna give me some beer, <laughs> right? And then later on that night, my friends called me up. You know, say, hey man, it's a big party over here. Let's go. You know, I was like, all right, you know. And then uh, went out with some buddies. You know, we got so drunk and uh, I came home puking that night, right? And then I was just like throwing up. You know, throwing up, throwing up. And then uh, there was a voice that says, hey, why, why do you keep doing this to yourself? You know, I was like, man, what the, you know? And that's what I remember, like, you know, what that pastor said. You know, I mean, during that night, I was, like, pretty much thinking about what that pastor said, too. And then uh, it finally hit me, you know. I just, like, I just cried out to God. And I was like, you know, God, you know, I surrendered. We don't go, you know. <laughs> I surrendered, man, you know. And, uh, you know, get a throw dead or alive, you know. I put my life in your hands, you know, to guide me, you know. And uh, ever since that night. You know, the next day, you know, I'm like, man, I felt like, I felt light, you know, I felt good, you know. 
And I was like, man, it's weird. And then, like, after that, you know, God started speaking to me, you know. He doesn't, like, come up, come down and just talk to me. But, like, you know, he ain't, like, you know, getting messages. You know, I'll see, like, billboard signs. <laughs> you know, God saves, you know. Like, he's always, like, trying to remind me, don't forget about me, you know. And then, uh, you know, I, I was like, you know, you know, all right, you know. And then I mean, it was a slow process. You know, I didn't change, like, right away, you know, but... I quit smoking cigarettes. Uh, I learned how to uh, let all my friends go. You know, uh, you know. I just started obeying whatever God told me. You know, like I mean, it's hard to explain this, but once God surrendered 100 percent, because God, man, like He really does speak to you. But He just like surrendered Himself to Him, like 50 percent, 94 percent. That's all you're gonna get back. But you give Him like 100 percent, huh? You know, you really want to know God for real. You want to hear Him. You got to give Him, like, everything. You know, I, I just let, I let everything go. You know, I was like, God, you know, it's like, you know, I just quit everything, you know. I just done God tonight. And then, uh, you know, uh, I met my wife, uh, Rosie, you know. And then, um, you know, uh, we got married, you know, got two beautiful kids. And, uh, yeah, He just blessed me so much. You know, and then he just like, man, he just gives you everything, you know, he bless you. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, you know, who is this God? You know, who's up on the dinner? You know, you know, and then uh, that's why I'm here today, church, you know, every Sunday, you know, taking TE class with uh, Nia Singh here, you know, I you know, listen to Sifu, you know, Tessana and stuff like that. I mean, anything that brings me closer to God, that's where I want to be at right now. So, uh, you know, I just want to let you guys know, you know, more fun to do, huh? You know, and uh, he changed my life, and uh, I hope that one of these days you guys give him 100 percent too, and uh, you know, change your life, and uh, you know, that's that's pretty much what I got today. And thank you for listening. God bless.